I want to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Check this out. This is my 40 gallon breeder. And you can't see in the tank, can you? Well, I just set it up as a food web tank. Here's what I did. I've loaded it with leaves and I poured mud into it from this supply. This has got two inches of mud in the bottom. I stirred it up, poured about a gallon in, and I have added uh, local oak leaves, um, live oak leaves, and a bag full of leaves from a uh, uh, big fruit tree. Look at that. Catapa leaves. Now the leaves are beginning to settle. By the time they all settle, I've got a lot of them in here. It's going to be about two inches deep. The water is has cleared up about halfway since I uh, did this uh, about two hours ago. Sorry, I didn't show you doing it, but I was just kind of determined to get it done. So you can see leaves on the bottom and they're falling. They sink pretty quickly. They're going to build a base. Uh, I will, I've got some uh, uh, little um, crevences in here. I have pseudomagills and a couple of native fish, golden top minnow, and uh, I think there probably are some Formosa. I will also be putting uh, scarlet battis and some, I think, Phoenix Rasbora for now. And then I'm going to add other fish as we go along. My goal is to have a deep enough leaf structure, at least an inch deep. I'm hoping to get it two inches deep, that there will be fish that will be able to live in those leaves, that's what a pistos do. In the wild, you find them living in, living in piles of leaves. They raise their babies, their babies feed. They spend generations living in those leaves. So that's the plan here. This is gonna clear up. I've got one little sponge filter on it, just to get a little bit of motion and to, uh, uh, to help clear the water a bit, but it's, it's settling pretty quickly. All of these leaves will be on the bottom by morning. So there you have it. The current father fish madness. Why do I do this? Why do I do this? I do it to demonstrate the power of nature to be able to maintain stable, healthy tanks where the fish are healthy, where they're happy, where they're finding food naturally, and where they're spawning and raising their fry. That's what happens in a natural aquarium. You can do this. Start with a dirted substrate. You want in a big tank like this, this is a 55. I've got two inches of dirt in the bottom and four inches of sand capping it. I do water changes maybe once every two to three months. That's with discus and wiru. I haven't done a water change here in a couple of weeks. I've been pull pulling water out of it to uh, bring it into this tank with these wiru. They've got things pretty well stirred up. It's gradually gradually clearing um, their fish that I got from somebody who had raised them in a bear tank. They're highly skittish. They're starting to calm down a bit, but I don't know if they're ever really going to be uh, stable and happy. We'll see. Anyway, you can start this very easily. You start it with an inch of dirt in a small tank, two inches of sand, and then start planting it. And plant it with plants that are going to grow fast. Put a nacarisk, a bomba, 
hornwort, things are going to jump right up. You can always add more plants later if you want to get into Musa philandera and some of the other fancy stuff. I've got this tank has been set up. I set it up at Father Fish about two years ago. So this is um, about two years, about two years old. So the idea is that nature knows how to take care of itself. And you really can trust nature to be able to do the right thing. All you have to do is create the basics. Duplicate what is in nature in your tank. I have lots of people say, oh, well, the tank can never be natural. Nonsense. Of course the tank can be natural. It can be as natural as, as a little tiny pond a little tiny pool of water sitting out, out outdoors somewhere. It can be perfectly natural. Right, it won't get rain in it, and you're probably going to have to use some kind of light on it. But those are pretty minimal, unique conditions. You can create all of the basics. You can do a food web like this. I've got another one here with these little discus. See the food web in here? Uh, I don't dare clean that up. That's nutrition for all the little fish. There are about a hundred little fish in here. Uh, little uh, rasboras, little tetras, other tiny, tiny fish, hermosa, and so forth. You can see there are also plecos in here, discus, lots of there, probably 50 fish in this thing the 30 gallon long. So it doesn't limit the number of fish you can have. Far from it. It allows you to keep more. The reality is the more plants you can have in a tank, the more fish you can have in a tank. That's a little baby Provenzas who was born in this tank right here about 10 weeks ago when I began moving them into some other tanks. I still got about 20 of them in here. So, there's the deal. I challenge you to trust Mother Nature because nature understands exactly how to do what you're trying to do. You don't need to be God. Let God be God. He's got control of this. His laws and rules are in place, and they will work for you. Create the basics. And then leave it alone and let it develop, let it grow, let it become something really wonderful and spectacular that you're going to love. This is a 29, that's a pseudomagill back there. And there are a bunch of really interesting little fish in here. They're tiny and they're hard to find. Let's see if I see any of them. They're all hiding. They they tend to go quiet in the evening. And it's right now here about 10 o'clock at night. So there, there's a little uh, uh, a little goby sitting on that rock. Well, all right, that's the lesson for today. Create a dirty mess. And you'll be amazed how wonderful it would be. It will become. I'll keep you posted on this tank. We'll look at it as we move along. These are rabbit snails, by the way. We've got a bunch of them in here. Hoping to get them breathing. All right. Very good. Love you all. Bye for now. Do it. You can do it. It's great fun. And you're going to absolutely love it.